it's 29 years later and we're still having the same conversations. You just call me a racist. Because you are. And it's gonna sound, I, again, racist, but. And don't say it. You're missing the point of all of this. Things haven't changed. Well, it's been nearly 30 years since the cast of The Real World in New York lived under the same roof. Now they are reuniting for a limited series to continue MTV's social experiment and revisit some iconic moments and discussions. Joining us now with more is author, activist, and original Real World cast member Kevin Powell. Kevin, thanks for joining Hi, Kevin. us. Good morning to you both. Thank you so much for having me. You know, Good morning I, to Chicago. I love Chicago. Good morning to you. You know, it's so weird because Larry and I remember this so vividly. It was, it was our era, you know, and this was so unusual to have this was you know reality tv wasn't a thing and so That's you guys right. didn't know what you were walking into what was what did you expect it to be when you walked in 30 years ago we felt like we won a game show prize number one it was very surreal because when do you get to be if you're someone between the ages of 19 and 20 something which is what we all were to live in a loft a free space like that in a high-end part of new york city manhattan um it was it was transformative for us and and you know to the credit of mtv they had the vision of bringing people together and as you all saw we got to talk about race we got to talk about uh homophobia we got to talk about homelessness about uh, uh women's issues like probably being uh, about choice etc all those things can happen in our 13 episodes and we really had no idea the impact was going to have because there was no social media and there's really no texting back then so so we had yeah. no idea how many people watched it. Yeah, I mean, for you to be leading a discussion on race, it seems like ahead of its time. Where do you think we are now compared to where you were then? Did you feel like there more progress would be made in that conversation? Well, obviously, you know, things like Barack Obama from the great state of Illinois ended up being the first black president of the United States. So we did see progress in some ways. I'm thankful for the Me Too movement. I'm thankful for marriage equality. I'm thankful for Black Lives Matter existing. But the, the problem is that these things do exist. It says that we still have a lot of work to do in our country. But what I think people will see with the six new episodes that we've done is the seven of us, in spite of our different backgrounds, are a family. And there's a great bond there because, as you all said, no one did this before us. You know, this is the first one. There was no Kardashians, no Cardi B, nothing for folks. To, for us to look at and you'll see us working through and talking about our own evolution since 1992 which is nearly 30 years ago which is something i believe that americans need to do sit down and talk with each other and listen to each other even where we may disagree the key thing is talking and listening the new york times did a write-up on this i just thought it was so interesting the tagline to the original show was when people stop being polite and they start being real and they said it's kind of like well, now people stop being impolite and just start getting old. <laughs> is it, is it, do you just mellow over time? Is that what you found when you ran into people? There's a maturity or are people having the same issues with each other? No, we still, we still are very passionate. I mean, yeah. Norman and I, for example, you know, Norman was the first openly gay person on a national TV show in our country. People need to understand the historic importance of what he represented as well, not just the conversations on race and racism. And we still are dealing with these issues. And so you'll see tears, you'll see a lot of emotions coming out of us for sure i don't know how much i mellow because i have five skateboards behind me so i'm not trying to be young but i'm not uh, uh ancient yet are you still riding skateboards oh yeah i love skateboards oh. i ride them they, they filmed me riding it through the loft this time i'm sure it's going to be on camera at some point oh my god man be yeah. careful i will <laughs> is it is it cool to go back i mean would you do it again now if looking back i mean was it a great jumping off point for you I have no regrets because yeah. I think that it was a bigger purpose than us. Again, you know, when you, especially when you all see the new episodes as they unfold, you see what our lives have become. You know, how Eric has become this person who was like this, this pop culture kid has become a very deep spiritual guru in his, his older years. It's really incredible to see the transformation of people from our cast. And so I hope that people see themselves. I, I hope they see the conversations that we have, but also that people can actually still love each other, which is what we need in our country. We need conversations and we need love because you all know what we've had to, we've been dealing with for the last few years. We need to figure out ways to bring people together. Absolutely. Well, it's a pleasure to talk to you, Kevin. Thanks, the Real Kevin. World Homecoming so New York much. is now streaming on Paramount+. Plus. You can catch all new episodes every Thursday night, and also the original Real World is on there, too, so you can kind of watch them in tandem. And you can also order Kevin's latest book, When We Free the World, online. Thanks, Kevin. Thank you.